When it comes to our pets, not only do they provide love and companionship, but studies actually have shown they might help you live longer and live healthier. So it's time for Ask the Vet, and joining us is Dr. Douglas Essen, who specializes in veterinary ophthalmology. And you're here for a reason, because we have a question from one of our senior producers, and it's about her two fur babies. My husband Mike and I have these two adorable little dogs, and they're both Yorkies and they're mixed with Chinese crusted. This is our girl Java. She has cataracts, and she just recently gone blind from them. And now we also have Ralph, and he's her brother. He's a couple years younger than her, but now he's actually developing cataracts in his eyes, and we're wondering if there's some way to prevent them from forming. And we're trying to understand when is it a good time to get it fixed, or... Is it like too risky to put such a little dog under the knife? And then my other question is, their mom also had cataracts, and so I didn't know if maybe it's a genetic. Just any guidance you guys can provide would be greatly appreciated. Brooke is in our producer's area, and Brooke, for the record, you have two beautiful babies. Oh, thank you, Dr. Yeah. Travis. And I know you're worried about them, so Dr. Essen, I'm gonna go to you first here. So when you look at Brooke and the issues she's having with her dogs, what's going on? Yeah, those, those are really good questions. That's the kind of stuff we, uh, we deal with every day. So um, yes, we see cataracts uh, really not uncommonly in, in pets and dogs and cats and, and the patients we deal with. Um, most of those cataracts are either hereditary, meaning genetic, from, from mom or dad, or maybe both. Um, some of them are because of metabolic issues. We see uh, increasingly pets that have things like diabetes, and that will predispose them to cataracts. Um, we tend to evaluate those guys. People will bring them in just like you and say, hey, my dog has cataracts. I think it's really affecting uh, my dog's quality of life. Is this something we should manage or fix? Um, there's sort of two levels. One is the, the management of the inflammation and, and, and the things that happen in association with the cataract formation. Um, so even if your dog's not a candidate for surgery or not interested in surgery, there's still a lot of benefits to uh, managing some of those changes. Um, and then, of course, the, the big question, hey, can we make my dog see again? Um, usually, yes. We do a little bit of testing beforehand to find out, hey, what's the health of the inside of the eye? We check out some retinal function and some parameters that um, give us a good idea um, in terms of, hey, do we think cataract surgery might be a good idea for this dog? Or, you know what, maybe it's it's not the best option yeah, for this dog. because with pets, you can't say read the second right? line. Absolutely, so, yeah. So you have to rely on other diagnostic... Uh... Very much like the, the human pediatric guys. You know, you can think about these dogs as, as like a one-year-old kid that has that has cataracts. The, the same sort of approach. We have to kind of figure things out a little more. And for everyone at home, inside our eyes we have a clear natural lens but with cataracts that lens becomes cloudy and as a result it almost seems as though you're looking through a foggy windshield so that's kind of what happens with cataracts exactly and Brooke is it fair to say that if surgery is an option that you're on board yeah, I mean, that would be incredible because already he's, uh, Ralph's already like starting to run into different things and it's already a little bit alarming for us. In that vein, Dr. S and I, I heard that you might have a little a little surprise for Brooke. Well, yeah, we've uh, undertaken to uh, uh, take a look at your dogs um, to run out some of these diagnostic tests uh, to do some ultrasound and, and some ERG work, get a feel for what's going on inside those eyes. And uh, if cataract surgery is an option, then we're, uh, we're, we're offering to do that for you. Oh my God, that would be incredible. No, seriously, right. like we've been so stressed out about this. Oh my God, <laughs> that would be amazing. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. And when you, when you do that, Surgery on a dog obviously is different, but I mean, you're, nuts and bolts are probably the same, right? You're you're taking out the same yeah, cut, you yeah, it's same sort of thing. That now in people, I've, I've been in on on many human cataract surgeries, and in many cases they'll do that with you awake. They'll oh yeah, you. but a dog's not. Um, gonna just dogs, hang out. of course, are, are are completely anesthetized, but same sort of principle: opening up the eye, opening up the lens. Um, in most cases, we replace the lens with a new synthetic one, which is which is manufactured just as it is for people, um, and then uh, management afterwards. We treat a lot of inflammation, prevent infection, all that sort of stuff. And I think people in this country forget because in humans, we tend to diagnose it so early on. But remember, cataract's still the number one cause of blindness yep. worldwide and a huge problem across the world and also in our pets. Thank you so much for offering to help out. And so, Brooke, thanks for sharing your loves with us.